Hey everyone, it's Andrew and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm giving my full review of the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. I'll touch on all the important features like battery life, performance, and camera, as well as give my overall experience with the device. I've been an iPhone user for over 13 years now and I've never ventured outside to any other smartphone but this year I really was curious to try something new. I've had the device for a little over a month now and honestly my expectations weren't very high. I'd never used Android before, I'd never used another camera system, even in iOS I really don't venture outside of the stock Apple apps. So I didn't even use Google apps that much. And let me tell you, I absolutely love the S23 Ultra and we'll get in today why I love it so much. Also guys, this video is sponsored by Mint Mobile but more about them later. Let's start with the design. I have the S23 Ultra in green and it looks stunning. I love the slight curved display. It's actually really comfortable in hand as well. The back of the phone is a nice matte feeling and a lot of the phone is made with recycled materials, but it's nothing that you can even tell. It's engineered beautifully, very well made and feels premium. We'll get into the camera in a bit, but I do like the way the camera looks on the back. It has an armor aluminum frame. The phone did fall between the crack of the car seat and middle console of my mom's car. It actually chipped a part of the phone, which is really disappointing actually. I do wish that it was a little bit more durable since the distance that it fell from wasn't that high, but regardless, it's still okay. The display is gorgeous at 6.8 inches. It uses the dynamic AMOLED 2X Infinity O QHD plus edge screen display. It's kind of a long name, but in short, it's a beautiful display. This is the biggest display I've ever used. And I do think Samsung is missing some opportunities with not having a 6.1 inch or a 5.8 inch display for the Ultra. The display has the camera hole punch cut out, which is really nice. I have the 14 Pro and it's a perfect size. It actually looks really tiny compared to the S23 Ultra, which is kind of funny. And speaking of my iPhone 14 Pro, I plan to do an entire video devoted to comparing the 14 Pro to the S23 Ultra. So subscribe if you want to see that. The display is optimized for immersive gaming, which I actually don't gain that much. I'd like to get back into it, but I just don't have time for it. But I do like watching videos on YouTube and it's perfect for that. Before we go any further, let's talk about today's partnership, Mint Mobile. I've been using Mint Mobile on my S23 Ultra for weeks now, and it's been incredible. The process was really easy to set up. All I had to do was download the Mint Mobile app, put my SIM card in and activate the SIM. Pretty normal stuff, but the service is super good as well. It does exactly what you need it to do, whether I'm at home or out and about, I haven't had any issues with it. I get great speed on the internet, no drop calls, and I can update my plan whenever I need to with the easy to use app. You can start saving money today by using Mint Mobile. Switching is super easy, it takes about 15 minutes. And while we're on the topic of the S23 Ultra, you can also buy that from Mint Mobile as well, which is very cool. Pick up your new phone and get your new service today. You can use my link to start saving today. Just go to mintmobile.com slash Andrew Clare. All right, back to the video. You get 1,750 nits peak brightness and for HDR, you get 1,200 nits. You also have HMB at 1,200 nits and you get an adaptive refresh rate at 120 Hertz. The display looks good, really indoors or outdoors. And the display is also using Gorilla Glass Victus 2. And you also get a water resistance rating of IP68. Overall, the display is very satisfying and feels smooth. One thing I do really enjoy about the Ultra screen is the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. It's really convenient and it's a feature I definitely wish I had on the iPhone. I've noticed the face reader isn't as quick as Face ID, but because of that, I find myself using the fingerprint scanner a lot more. I, I like it more than Face ID, to be honest. So having that option as well as the Face ID is just super helpful. The chip in the S23 Ultra is rocking the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip. The phone is very powerful. I'm not doing anything crazy. I haven't even used multitasking, to be honest. I just don't have a use case for it. 
but the Geekbench scores have been great and performance is overall good. I can also say over the last month or so, I haven't experienced any bugs or weird things happening with the device. The performance is solid and there's really nothing to complain about. Probably the biggest thing I've noticed with what I like about the device is the battery life. I easily get through the day and on days where I'm really not using my phone as much, I get a day and a half. Screen on time has been consistently over seven hours, but the battery overall has lasted me sometimes 30 hours, just, you know, on and off, not using it as much. It's the best battery life I've experienced on my smartphone. It's been my biggest gripe with using the iPhone 14 Pro. It's just not a good battery life. I can't say enough good things about it. And if you're looking for a phone and you need a really good battery, this is definitely the phone you should consider buying. I do want to talk briefly about my experience using Android for the first time, and honestly, it's really good. I really like how simple customization is on this. With Apple, you have to do so much to get a home screen to look the way you want it, and it doesn't even come out quite like you want it. But stock apps on the phone are good. I know it would be copying Android, but I really wish Apple would take away the dock on the home screen. It's just getting old, and it doesn't look good. I also love how you can just delete an app and it doesn't move around the other apps. It's really freeing and I definitely want to play around with customization more and I can actually really understand people's frustration with Apple's iOS limitations. I get it. I have noticed apps like Twitter and Instagram are a bit better on the iPhone, but not much and not everybody even uses those apps, so it might not even matter. Before we get into the camera, since that's going to take up some time, I do want to mention the S Pen. At first, I kind of felt like I didn't really need it, but I have found it really nice to take notes and sketch something up or draw. But overall, yes, I actually really love the S Pen. So onto the camera right away, let me just say it's amazing. I'll start with the front camera. It's a 12 megapixel front facing camera. It takes pretty solid selfies for photos and videos. For the back of the phone, you have a 200 megapixel wide camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 10 megapixel Tele 3X optical zoom, and a 10 megapixel Tele 10X optical zoom. That was a mouthful, but in short, the camera's a beast. But to be honest, I haven't used it much for video, but it's really good. I don't have a device currently to edit 8K videos on so that's why i'm just using it for photos but what has really impressed me the most personally is the 10x optical zoom it has given me amazing photos that otherwise i haven't been able to take and i think it's the closest to professional camera photos that i've taken here are some examples that are just going to be going on the amount of detail it captures is just fantastic i'm also impressed with the scene optimizer it intelligently recognizes scenes and optimizes colors for brilliant shots. I think it really depends on how you like your photos, but to me, I really like the vibrance and sharpness this camera provides. Something I really think that's great as well is the zoom, but only up to a certain point. What I would say is the 30x zoom, maybe up to 50x zoom, the photo actually comes out and can look nice. Here are a few examples, and the closer you try to zoom in, it just looks horrible and it's not clear. But at the end of the day, it is a smartphone, and the fact that you can actually get that far is pretty good, so I don't want to hate on that. As I was writing this script, the whole moon thing happened, and honestly, I don't really care about it. I have some pictures that I've taken of it, and when I show people, they're really impressed. I didn't buy the phone for this, and I only figured it out later after all the news broke out. I don't have actually too many night shots, but here's a low light shot I took. And it looks really, really nice. From my own experience with the device, I really don't have anything to complain about. If I'm being honest right now, I'd have to say this is the best phone out there that you can buy. And it's strange to say, I don't think it means the iPhone all of a sudden sucks now or anything like that. And for my Apple fanboys, don't worry, I'm not leaving Apple. But I do see some areas that Apple needs to improve on and is lagging in. 
I'm really excited for iOS 17 and the iPhone 15 Pro. One last thing, the phone is pretty expensive. I spent about 1300 on it, 1200, I can't remember exactly. It is pretty expensive. So just keep that in mind. There's a lot of really good phones out there that you can get for cheaper. I don't know if there's a phone better than this phone and especially at the price that you're buying at, you're getting your money's worth, but just keep that in mind. In conclusion, the S23 Ultra is a fantastic flagship phone and I'm personally really happy with my purchase. If you were on the fence about buying this phone, then I think it's an amazing purchase. Like if you need me to tell you buy it, I don't think you'll go wrong with it. I think you should buy it. I'm not familiar with these phones long term, so do keep that in mind. In terms of like Android updates and durability, maybe watch a couple other reviewers that are more familiar with Samsung. But I do think you can't go wrong with this device. If you're an iPhone user and you want to switch, well, I plan to do a whole video on that. But in short, you are giving a lot up if you're fully integrated with the Apple ecosystem. But if you do want to switch, just make the switch. It, it's not a big deal. You can always switch back if you don't like it. But I'll save more on that in another video. Make sure to sub to the channel for my iPhone 14 Pro vs S23 Ultra video coming soon. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Don't forget about Mint Mobile. Thanks for watching guys. God bless and I'll see you on the next video.